Hey guys, let me know what you think by liking and commenting, and it really helps me and this channel out when you subscribe, so please click that button. Thanks a bunch! Hey everybody, in today's lesson I'm going to teach you how to speed match two locomotives. Now the two I'm going to speed match are pretty much the same. You saw me put them together in lessons one and two, and I'm going to make it so that we can run these in consist. This is speed matching using the simplest method I know. So if you're looking for something super complicated, this isn't it. You can use JMRI if you want, but this is the simplest and quickest way to do it. Also, although I am using the same chassis and same decoder, this technique will actually work if they differ. I've never had a problem speed matching trains from disparate uh, manufacturers, but they do have to have one particular CV and that's CV6 in order for this to work. I'll put together another video though for speed matching disparate locomotives with different controllers, that sort of thing. But right now I'm going to do this. It's the simplest one there is available. Just briefly, I'm happy to announce that this series has been picked up by a sponsor and that's Super Smooth Modeling Lubricants. It is a new company with a lot of new ideas. You've seen them sitting by Susie Sheep in my train grab bag series, but now I am proud to announce that in fact, they are going to take part and make these possible. Super Smooth was started by a group of modelers who didn't particularly care for the high price point, but somewhat lacking performance of a lot of the lubricants on the market today. So they decided to form their own company in conjunction with a very well-known and instantaneously recognizable name in the lubrication industry. We can't quite say who it is, but trust me, you will know them as soon as their name is spoken. These come in light, medium, and Teflon PTFE versions, and all are good for metal and plastics alike. Like. These new formulations are 100% synthetic and designed with today's hobbyist in mind. The light and medium oils come in convenient 15 milliliter bottles that have a metal needle applicator and the PTFE comes in a convenient 15 ounce tube. In order to celebrate this partnership, if you go to my website and purchase any of these products with the code SUPERMAY10, I'll put the link down in the description you will receive 10% off any Super Smooth product for the month of May. So once again, that's Super Smooth. It's slicker than smooth. Okay, here are the important CVs that we're gonna need in order to sync these locomotives. The first that we're gonna care about is CV29. CV29 not only tells you what kinds of address is using, but it tells you all the other basic parameters of the decoder as well. And we're gonna need to use three speed non-speed table operation. CVs 2, 6, and 5 handle the minimum, mid, and maximum speed range. And the reason why 6 is higher than 5 is it was kind of an afterthought, so they added it in after they added in 5. So CV3 handles the acceleration rate, while CV4 handles the deceleration rate. And you'll want to check your manual before you try to adjust any of these because they're not standard in how they're used. Some of them have ranges from 0 to 255, some of them have ranges from 0 to 64, some of them add a certain amount of milliseconds, subtract a certain amount of milliseconds. You just don't know until you actually look at the manual. I'm going to be using Soundtracks decoders and these and ESU and Lens and a couple others all work the same. So we're going to be lucky there. But remember, there is no specific standard as to how these work. Always consult the manual. Okay, now we need to set CV29. Now this is important because CV29 also handles the address, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you do the address correctly first before you do any of these others. Now in mine, I'm going to use an address higher than 127, so I'm going to set the long address bit. So this will change my final value, so you're gonna to have to be cognizant of that. The first bit that you need to have on, or at least that I strongly recommend you have on, very strongly, is bit one. And that'll turn on 28 step or 128 step speed. That'll help matching quite a bit. So there should be no reason not to turn one on. And I just need to let you know that I always turn bit two off because my Marklin controller, when it puts the initial pulse down the line, for some reason, soundtracks and wow decoders interpret that initial pulse as DC for some reason, and it makes the uh, model run at full speed. So I always turn off bit two. You may not because you may want to run your DCCs under DC, but I don't. I never have a reason to. The next bit is going to be the important one here, and that is bit four. And remember, I'm counting from zero, so it's actually the fifth bit over. It's this one right here. 
and it needs to be off so that you can tell the decoder that you're going to use three speed. You're not going to use the speed table, you're going to use three point speeds only. The minimum, the mid, and the maximum. So in order to do that, bit four, which is the fifth bit over, has to be off. And finally, I'm going to turn on bit five because I am going to use a large address. So that makes my value 34. So 34 if you use a large address and two if you use small address. Even though earlier I said I was going to do this in lesson three, I'm actually going to hold off on contesting until lesson four. So right now I'm just doing speed matching using this basic technique only in this lesson. The first thing we need to do is set CV29 and we need to set the address. So this is number 116, I understand that, but I'm actually going to set it to address 1160. The reason I want to do this is because I want other locomotives, namely this B unit, to fall in with it. So if you want to think of it this way, it's 116.0, which goes to an address of 1160. All right, next I want to set this next B unit, which will be the next B unit in the sequence, to 116.1, which will be the address of 1161. By the way, you're in luck. Today I'm actually going to synchronize two disparate locomotives because I found out that my Kato slash Stewart had cracked gears, so I went ahead and replaced it with a different one. Either way. It's time to warm up your locomotives, and we want to give them about 10 minutes to do so. Now, it's important that if you're messing around with one, you don't let the other one cool down. Now, I was sort of forced to let one cool down because I didn't realize that I had the cracked gears, and I started hearing them, so you don't see me warming up the other one. So keep them both warm. Alrighty, after that, let's go ahead and get address 34, just like I said it would. Here it goes, 34. And now we want to go ahead and do the slow speed. As I've shown you above, CV2 is set to 1, and that's good. I'll take it. That's It's not as slow as I normally would like, but for now, this will work just fine. I'm going to go ahead and set the max speed and the mid speed now. The default values for 5 and 6 were a little bit too fast, so I just set 5 to 128, and I set 6 to 32. I like it when my mid speed is actually kind of slow, because I use it as a shunting type speed. And you can see the values for 5 and 6 here. Remember, 6 is the mid speed. All right, I like it when my consists actually accelerate very slowly, but stop rather quickly, because if there's an emergency, but I don't want to hit the emergency stop, I just want to dial down the speed and have them stop. But there's something really important to remember here. It's generally not a good idea when you're consisting to run the throttle all the way from 0 to 100 really quickly. There's no good reason to do it. You should step it up gradually. And the slower your locomotive accelerates, the more difficult it's going to be to speed match with another locomotive. It sounds kind of counterintuitive, but it's true. The slower it goes, the more difficult it is to speed match. But I think this 32 is what I'm looking for, so I think that'll work well, and I'll just leave it like that, and I'll go ahead and speed match it, even though if it's going to be a little bit more difficult. All right, and as it comes around here, I'll just put it to a full stop without emergency stopping, and you'll see what I mean. 8 is pretty slow. It's not bad. Actually, I wouldn't mind it being a little bit slower, but I think we'll go ahead and live with this. Now I'll go ahead and change it. I will change it out to 6. I think that'll be a little bit better. I'll change it to 6. All right, again, to summarize, my acceleration, my initial acceleration value is 32. My deceleration value is 6. My slow value is 1, and the locomotive won't necessarily run with a CV value of 1. You may have to actually push it up beyond 1 for it to start moving, and from there you can decide what your slow value is. All right, and my mid value, which is CV6, don't get them flipped, that's 32 because I like kind of a slower mid speed, and my 128 is the fast speed, and it's, it's not all that fast, as you'll see. Just remember that these values are only for the lead locomotive. For the trailing locomotive, you're going to want to use values like these. For the trailing locomotive, I would turn off CV3, just turn off acceleration altogether and let it just go to full speed as quickly as possible. You can set 4 to 6 if you want, it's usually kind of close, and then I would leave the default values on all the others, but you may be able to switch 2 to 1. Remember, this is on the trailing locomotive, don't reset the values you just set for the lead locomotive. 
In order to use the technique I'm gonna show you here, you need to be able to control both locomotives separately. But I'm gonna violate that a little bit, and I'm gonna show you why here in a second, but you need to be able to control both separately. If you can't control both locomotives separately, then what you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to time the lead locomotive going across a known distance while it's up to the speed you want, and then you're gonna to have to time and adjust the trailing locomotive separately. If anyone's interested, I can do a video on that, but it's gonna be a little bit more cumbersome. The other way I can think of to do it without using a throttle where you can control both separately is to use a rail speedometer, a model rail speedometer. I don't have one of those because I don't need one. I can control these separately, so. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do on mine. I'm going to create an MU set or a multiple unit set, and I'm going to name it CBQ116 because that is the lead locomotive's number. And I'm going to add these units into it. Eventually, actually, I'm going to add three because, like I said, the gears in the one were cracked. So I had to go ahead and get another one ready. Plop them in here. There we go. So now the Markland Central Station will send commands to both locomotives. Now, the way I like to do this is I like to put the consist um, or the lead loco onto the right side. In this particular case, I'm going to put the whole consist and I am going to put the one that I am working on to the left. And what'll happen here is if I use the right throttle, it'll control both, but I can actually override that throttle for the trailing unit, for the B unit, by using my left throttle. And here, I'll show you. I'll use the right and both will go up, but then I will use the left and you'll see that I can use it independently of the consist. I don't know if you can do this with yours, but it's a handy feature on mine, and that way I can speed up or slow down the trailing locomotive. And then I can reattach to the consist just by turning the right dial. Okay, so the order of events here is I want to first do CV2, which is slow. It's the, in some ways the easiest ones to do, but in some ways it's also the most difficult because at least on a distance basis, sometimes it can be the hardest one to sync in a way. Okay. After that, we are going to do CV5 fast. And after that, we'll do the mid. And the reason why we do this is sometimes the fat, the fast CV5 affects the mid. So we wanna do the slow and the fast, and that way we bracket the mid, and then we can do the mid. After we do this, we'll do the acceleration, and then we will do the deceleration. And then what we'll do is we'll kind of wrap it all up, uh, maybe make some slight adjustments at the end. Now, one thing to note is when these things come around the curve and into my straight, the straight is where I want to time them because obviously the inner curve is going to take that locomotive around faster. And what I do is I basically hold up or just slightly push back the one locomotive to synchronize them. Now, this may not work particularly well if you've got a locomotive with traction tires on it because they want to really grab on. So if you have traction tires, it's better to go ahead and sync them as closely as possible and then you can hold it up a little but of course, don't hold it up so much that it starts to strain and either stop breaking. Okay, so let's do this. I've got the trailing loco on the far track, the lead loco on the front one, and I'm going to start to do CV2. I just click it up one notch. In fact, it still reads 0%, but I promise it's at one notch out of 128. Here you can see that the lead loco is definitely a little bit faster than the trailing locomotive or the B unit. So what I'm going to do is I am going to just... Put a little bit more input into CV2. Gonna put in three, let's try that. Let's just put them back so that I know they're lined up. Okay, on this second run, it's clear that the trailing locomotive is ever slow, slightly faster. So all I wanna do is I think is I wanna just put it at two and that should be close enough as long as they're within about one or two miles per hour of each other. It could be even a little bit worse for what it's worth. So now I've changed CV2 to two, which is the slow speed. And remember, I'm making all these changes on the trailing locomotive or the one that's on the inner side of my oval. And this looks pretty darn good. So let's just go with that. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and do CV5, which is max. And I just threw a value of 128 in there because that's what I put in the other one and we'll see how it goes. But you do have to remember that I left the acceleration delay on the lead locomotive. So what I'll do is, you can't see me doing it, but I'm manipulating the throttle so that I slow down the trailing unit because that's the throttle that's on the left side. So that's what I'm doing here. We will bring the 
these around, 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 around. There we go. And I go ahead and hold these up and we will see which one is faster as it comes by the finish line here on my almost quarter mile track. Yeah, so clearly the A unit is faster, no doubt about it. So what we'll do is we'll just give VMAX, which is five, a little bit more speed. So I'll go from 120 to 160, sorry, 128 to 160. And let's see what kind of a difference that makes as I hold these back. Okay, it's pretty clear that even 160 wasn't enough. So let me change it to 192 and see if that helps the trailing locomotive catch up to the lead locomotive. So as they come around the turn again, I'll hold up whichever one's in front and then I'll let them go at the same time and we'll see which one gets here first. Oh my goodness, that's actually pretty close. Uh, kind of amazed that just with sort of three different numbers here I've actually got them to be that close so it's not going to take much maybe go down to 188 or something like that so let's see let's hold them up again and see if I can get a better read this time huh I really that close? Just in three clicks? That seems kind of unbelievable. You know, I'm just going to do this one more time just to be sure. So bear with me for a second. Have these come back around and I'll try this one more time. Well, golly gee, actually, I think I'm going to leave it at 192 for now. And what I'll do is I'll work with the mid. And if necessary, I'll come back later and adjust it. And then, believe me, sometimes it can take a long time to fine tune in that number. I just happened to get it on the third try. And that was really nothing more than sheer luck. So now you're going to see I'm going to bring the entire consist down to 50%. And when I do this, that I know... Both locomotives are getting the exact same speed information. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change CV6. It's at 32 right now. And it looks, yeah, it's definitely the trailing unit is slow. So there's no reason to leave it at 32. We'll change it to 48 and we'll resync them and see what happens. Okay, it's pretty clear that the trailing unit is still going faster, so let's bring them around. And I will take some of the speed away. So it was a little bit too slow, then a little bit too fast. So let's go to 36 and see if that helps. I'm gonna get these things around here, and then we'll, we'll see what 36 looks like. So again, I bring down the speed on the consist to 50%. And I know because it's consisted like this that both of these locomotives are getting the same speed information. Okay, well that was slow again. So I'm starting to bracket it. Um, let's take it to 44 and see how this works. Okay, it looks like the trailing unit was just a tad slow, so let's just simply add one to it, bring them back around again, change this to 50%, and again, I do this on the consist. So we'll sync them up, and we will see which one gets here first. I actually, even before it gets here, I'll be able to tell
Okay, no, it looks like 44 is the way to go. I think that's going to be the best. Uh, yeah, we'll leave it at 44. Now we're going to do the acceleration, and what we're going to do is we're going to put them on the straight again, and we're going to put them side by side, and I'm going to program a CV3 with 32, which is exactly what the other one is, but since it uses a different motor and different gears, it may not accelerate the same. And I'll start the other one at 6, and we'll jam it up all the way, and we'll see if they accelerate together or not. All right, so it's clear that the trailing unit is accelerating more quickly, so we're going to need to just shave a little bit of speed off of it, and, and 33 will be enough. And so what I'll do now is I'll test the stop. All right, the trailing unit is stopping just a little more slowly. In other words, it's taking slightly longer to stop. And I know probably four will make it work. Four will probably just about get that right. So again, um, CVs three and four on a lot of decoders, they're not standard necessarily, but they can be a little bit confusing because the larger the number, the more slowly things happen. Just don't forget that. So if I were to make CV 380, it would take forever for these units to speed up. And if I were to put four to 60, they would take like an entire loop to stop. And some people like that, and that's what it's there for. So I'm gonna go ahead and run these on the same line now, and we will just really tweak these, and I should be able to tweak these with just the CV values alone. So we'll put a gap in between them, and if this works right, by the time it comes back around, that gap should be exactly the same or very close to being the same. It is very important to note that even if you had two locomotives that were synced exactly the same speed, they may not go around the track at the same speed. And the reason why is curves can change the way that, you know, they could change the amount of resistance that the motor has put on it. For instance, six axle locomotives have a tendency to go through curves a little bit more slowly than two. Some of them don't go over points the same way. So don't be surprised if there is a little bit of variance. And if you look, and I'm sorry you can't see it quite as well as I'd like, my trailing unit has kind of hugged up a little bit on my lead unit. I'll move it a little bit more closely so you can see that. But either way, I just need to bring, uh, I, I need to bring the trailing unit to a halt a little more quickly. So I will change it to three. I said four earlier, but yeah, we'll give three a shot and see if that works. So here we go. I crank on the power and let's see what they look like when they come back around. Okay, after watching it come back around again, I realized that the speed is set just a little bit too high on the trailing unit. And on the straights, it's pretty much even. But when it goes around the curves, it gains ground. So what I want to do is I want to kind of find the happy middle ground and slow it down just enough so that it has the same speed across the entire loop. So I'm going to change it from 192 to 190. And let's see how that goes. And again, this is CV5. I'm messing with the top speed of the trailing unit. Let's see how that goes. You know what? I think that did it. I think that did it. I think changing the max from 192 to 190 did it. And look at that. They have the same gap pretty much throughout it. It's a little bit narrower. But that's okay. That means they're still running pretty close together. And if we accelerate them here, they should have roughly the same gap. You know, that's pretty darn close. So I think we have a successful speed match. I think that's what we've got. Yep, they're definitely close enough, no doubt about it. This is a good speed match, and I couldn't be more pleased. This is gonna work really well. Now, don't forget, this will get even better when it, they have a load on them. As you can see, there's no couplers between them, they're just running free. They'll have a load on them, so there'll be actually something holding them all back, which will help keep them coupled together. So 
as you can see, they're running around the track just perfect, and that is the gap. It widens and shrinks a little bit, and it looks like the trailing unit is um, better on the curve, but then it evens out on the straight, and that's exactly what we want. So there you go. There is a simple three-point speed match. It didn't take all that long. Sometimes they can take a bit longer, but these were done with the same controller but disparate locomotives, but still wasn't perfect. I wasn't able, wasn't able to leave the same numbers in there. I had to actually change the numbers for the trailing unit. I hope this helped you out in some way. If you have any comments, I'd love to read them and reply to them, so leave them down below. If, uh, you know, if you have any other things to say about it, if you like it, I'd sure appreciate it if you like. And if you really like it, and I hope you do, I hope you subscribe. It really helps me out. So until next time, I hope you take care, stay safe, and happy model railroading. I'll catch you later. Train approaching. Please remain behind yellow line.